Hey everyone, welcome back to the channel. Today, we are diving into a topic that's crucial for anyone exploring Linux. Port distributions you might want to steer clear of, especially if you are new to the ecosystem, or value security and reliability. I have spent years testing dozens of Linux distros, and while most are solid, a few stand out for all the wrong reasons. I'll break down why these four, which is Linux, Deepin, Ubuntu and Red Star OS aren't the best choice. Based on real issues like security flaws, privacy concerns, and poor development practices. We'll also touch on better alternatives at the end. So let's get into it. First up, Linux, also known as Linux FX or Ubuntu in its previous incarnations. This distro's main selling point is mimicking Windows 11's look and feel to make the switch easier for Windows users. On the surface, it sounds appealing, familiar interface, pre-installed apps, and a promise of seamless transition. But dig deeper, and the problems pile up. Linux has a history of serious security lapses, including an exposed database that leaked user data during registration. Instead of fixing it quietly, the developers reportedly mock those who point it out. It's gone through multiple rebrands, likely to shake off its bad reputation, and now includes paid tires with AI features that feel more like a cash grab than genuine innovation. Plus, it bundles proprietary software that's hard to trust, and the whole project cuts corners to imitate Windows without the polish or security. If you're coming from Windows, don't fall for this hype. There are far safer options out there. Now, next one is Deepin. This one's a beauty. Its desktop environment is sleek, blending the best of macOS and Windows into something intuitive and visually stunning. I get why it's popular. The UI is polished and user friendly, making it tempting for beginners. However, Deepin's track record on security is shaky at best. In 2025, Open source removed Deepin from their repositories after discovering packaging tricks that bypassed security reviews, allowing unvetted code to slip through. There have been multiple vulnerabilities over the years that weren't addressed promptly by the upstream developers. On top of that, since it's developed in China, local laws raise questions about data privacy. Your system logs or other info could potentially end up on servers there even if it's not outright spyware. It's not maliciously intent proven, but the negligence and opacity make it a risk not worth taking, especially when other distros offer similar aesthetics without the baggage. Now, Ubuntu, a name that's synonymous with Linux for many. It was my first distro too, back in the day, and it's still one of the most stable and well-supported options out there which is great for servers, excellent community, and tons of software available. But lately, Ubuntu's direction has turned problematic. It's gotten rooted with custom tweaks to GNOME that slow things down. And the real issue is their push for snaps, a universal packaging format with a proprietary backend controlled by Canonical. Snaps are often larger, launch slower, and lag behind updates compared to traditional packages or flat packs. Ubuntu keeps forcing them on users, even for core apps like Firefox, which frustrates a lot of people and feels like it's mimicking Windows proprietary nudges. It's not insecure per se, but if you want a cleaner, more open experience, Ubuntu's villain arc, as some call it, is a reason enough to look elsewhere in 2025. Finally, Red Star OS. This one's more of curiosity than a serious contender, but it's worth warning about. Developed in North Korea and based on Fedora, it's designed for their internal networks with heavy censorship and surveillance built in. Files gets watermarked to track users, and it actively prevents tampering with the system. There are known vulnerabilities, like a flaw in its browser that allows remote hacking just by visiting a malicious link. Most available builds are over a decade old and late. So downloading them from shady sources is risky in itself. 
even running it in virtual machine isn't foolproof. If you connect it to the network, you could expose yourself to unknown threats, unless you are a security researcher. There is zero reason to touch this. It's a fascinating glimpse into state-controlled tech, but not something for everyday use. So, why avoid this? Linux is about freedom, security, and community, and this distros compromise on those friends in different ways. If you're new, stick to mainstream picks with strong reputations. For beginners, switching from Windows, try Linux Mint. It's Ubuntu-based, but without the snap hassle and bloat. Fedora offers a clean, modern experience with great hardware support. Or Pop OS from System76 if you want something gaming friendly and reliable. Do your homework. Check forums like Reddit, read recent reviews, and always verify downloads. Thanks for watching. If this helped, hit like, subscribe, and drop a comment. What's your go to distro? And have you had bad experiences with any of these? See you in the next video. Peace out. Thank <laughs> you.